Hi everyone, my name is Vin Pierre and welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. If this is your first time here, I'd like to say a massive welcome to you to uh, the channel. You know, this is me. I do whiskey reviews every week along with a couple of other bits and bobs. And every year I like to do a video like this where I go through my whiskey collection. Now this is a, a relatively unedited warts and all video. I'm literally, I'm going to reach down here and put bottles up and tell you a little bit about each one of them. You guys know how long this video is already. I don't know how long this video is. My collection has expanded quite a lot since last year's and last year's was 40 minutes. So let's get on with it. And as always, if you get to the end, don't forget to let me know how you got on. But um, also one final thing to, to note is that I'm gonna break these down into different chapters. So if you're only interested in like say Scotch, for instance, they're all gonna be kind of banded together so you can skip ahead and check out the uh, the stuff that you, that you really like yourself. In any case, let's check out those first three that are already sitting here. And these are, of course, my no-nonsense whiskey releases. If you were lucky enough to get hold of some of these, then absolutely brilliant. Hopefully you're uh, pop the cork and you're, you're drinking these. If not, the first two are available still on Ushki, and uh, there'll be a link below for that if you want to go and check them out. The uh, McMira, unfortunately, is now gone, um, but I, I have a, a few personal bottles left over for so If you do see me in person, we might be able to work something out. That's a whole other story. But yeah, so I'm going to show you each of these in turn as well. So this one, the first one was my Dalmore. Um, it was uh, it's fairly expensive, I have to say, but it was um, a real pleasure to get that. Um, there's going to be some bottle clunkings when I put these down. So again, warts and all this. I'm going to try and keep this as relatively unedited and as brief as possible. And then, of course, we have the Aberfeldy six-year-old. Really love this whiskey. This came through at about £45, and if you ask me, still a bit of a bargain. Um, I have a good few bottles of this myself, and I'm going to enjoy, as you can see, seal. I'm going to enjoy drinking these for years to come. Uh, then I moved on to a McMira, and as you can see, we've got lots of names on the, on the badge here. Uh, and that was because these people pre-ordered this and really helped me buy the cask. Uh, a bit of a understanding whiskey, I have to say. Again, fairly expensive, but um, well worth it. A bit of a, an interesting pick. I think we uh, we did this by committee, so really proud of this one. Definitely worth checking out. Now, as you can see, I've got a, gla a glass here that's empty. Um, this is going to be a lot of talking for me, so I'm going to grab my whiskey of the year from 2021 and then put it back down here, so you'll see it when it comes back out again. But it was the Glasgow 1770 Peated. Uh, is a half litre, um, even though the bottle is quite large, um, but it, well worth it. It's such a good whiskey. Um, and I'm starting with a peat early now, so that's going to be me done. So I'll pour that. Let's have a good one because this is going to be a fairly long video. We'll put that back down with its selection and we'll, we'll just crack on. Now I'm going to do, uh, I suppose it counts sort of separately, but I'm going to do these sealed bottles. I've got a couple of sealed bottles that are in the collection, as you'll see as we go along. But there's two that I've got that I have kept for, for whatever reason. The first one is this, the Glen Goyne Legacy Chapter 1. Um, I have to say, um, I really thought this series would do better. And I, I mean, I'm not into flipping whiskey at all, but um, you can still get this. Uh, I had, I've had this for like three years now, so I'm probably going to open this, I have to admit. But, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Now this one, I don't think I will open. This is uh, an inaugural release Cotswold. So this was the first whiskey that they released. Um, it's a 2017. Uh, but if I show you this, I managed to get Dan, Dan Shaw, there you go, to sign this for me. So yeah, um, I don't think I'll be opening that anytime soon. And I think maybe my grandkids might sell that and uh, you know, hopefully make a nice tidy profit. That cost me 45 quid when it first came out. So don't, I don't know what that's doing. I'm, I don't intend to sell that, but it's just something that I can't bring myself to open. In any case, let's get onto the first category then. And we're going to be talking about English whiskey. Now for me, it's all down here and I'm going to be reaching down and grabbing this. That's why the microphone is here so that I don't rustle and whatnot, but let's get into them and we'll do them in some sort of distillery order uh, if I can, but I, I'm not organized about this at all. So yeah, please bear with me. Um, yeah, first one then, we've got the Lakes Distillery. I've got a couple of lakes. This is the Bal Mask, um, one of the Whiskey Makers editions. These things sell like crazy. Um, I picked this up because it happened to be in the distillery and it felt like a good thing to buy. Um, but I have to admit, I haven't rushed out to buy the other ones, even though they are very good. Um, and talking of Whiskey Makers editions, this is the Whiskey Makers Reserve number four. Um, properly astounding whiskey. These things are so good. 
Uh, if you're in the area for the Lakes Distillery, you should definitely go and check them out. Um, one final Lakes then, and that's the one. This is the Sherry Cask Finished. I wasn't expecting to like this, really like it. It's so good. It's so good. And uh, one final thing I should say as well is that most of these, I'll say if I haven't reviewed it or not yet, but most of these I've reviewed and I will put a very expansive list of all of these whiskies in the description below. So if you weren't sure what I said or what a whiskey was and you can't see on the camera and whatnot, they'll all be in order down below in the description with a link to my review of said whiskey, unless I haven't reviewed it yet. There you go. So keeping on with the English then, we've got the Henstone. Uh, this is their ex bourbon whiskey. They've got a good few more coming out. Uh, and at time of recording, I've got a um, I've got a tasting coming up with these. I don't think that's been announced yet, so spoiler alert. But um, yeah, very interesting new distillery doing things in a very kind of non traditional way, let's say. Um, but well worth checking out. Let's have a wee sip. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Okay, we've got um, only actually one Cotswolds in at the moment. This is their um, Sauternes cask. I'm a bit behind on Cotswolds, but I'll get there. And this is a um, yeah, truly excellent whiskey, but as you can see, it's getting quite low now. So I think it'll be going in the bottle kill queue because as you'll see, I've got quite a lot of bottles and I'm not sure if they'll fit this year. Last year, it was pretty close. You might not be able to see all of them. Can you see all of them? Just about, as we get up here behind this monitor, I don't think you'll be able to see. Uh, we've got an independently bottled English. That's from the Somerton Club. Um, very, very good. I have to hide this for myself because this will go real quick. Um, check out my review of that one because the Somerton Club are excellent. Excellent indeed. Uh, and then we've got two ones here, but I'll get them one at a time. Bimba, peated cask. The la uh, first and only Bimba that I've ever bought. Um, proper Bimba anyway, let's say. But just because I keep missing them. You know, I mean, this one here, it was a no-brainer and I managed to get hold of it because I'm, I'm one of the club members, but they're so hard to get hold of. Um, worth it if you can get it for retail, but please don't spend over and above, uh, you know, secondary market, it's ridiculous. Uh, and then we've got this wee weird thing here called the Apogee 12, which is a product of Bimba, but it's actually a blended scotch that's been finished in casks that used to have Bimba in it or something like that. Um, haven't reviewed that yet, so a time of recording. So if you're watching this later on in the year, I might have reviewed it. So, you know, do go and check because what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll add the links to the ones I've reviewed in the year throughout. Well, that's the end of the English whiskey. Um, I'm going to do kind of non whiskies next. There's only four of them, so don't worry about that too much. Um, you'll see what I mean by non whiskies. And then after that, we'll probably go into a category. I'm going to lump them all in together and say world whiskey because I don't have enough Irish. I don't have enough American whiskey to warrant their own section. So let's get into non whiskies. You'll see what I mean. So the first one is an English whiskey. This is these, uh, say, I said it was a whiskey. This is what I mean by warts and all. This is an English spirit. It isn't whiskey because this is rice, made from rice. Um, I uh, I was sent this by the distillery and I have to admit when I opened it, I was just like, what the hell have these guys sent me? But it is really bloody lovely stuff. Really bloody lovely stuff. Um, well worth checking out. Mm -mm. Uh, we have a cognac, my only cognac, uh, Hermitage Cognacs 2005. R really lovely. I'm not a big cognac guy, so you know, don't don't buy it. If you are a cognac cognac guy, don't take my word for it because I think it's lovely. It is lovely, but you know, find a cognac guy to tell you if uh, if you like it or not. Similar with this as well. This is one of the heroes and heretics. Got a lot of their bottles over here, but I've got a separate category for indies later. But this doesn't count because it's a rum, so I have bought this separately. Again, I think this is bloody lovely, but I'm not a rum guy. So, you know, if you if you are a rum guy, then, you know, seek out a rum person. I should say person, not guy. You know, slip of the tongue. And finally, we've got this Fireball. Uh, I bought this for my Dram Slams. Merch available, podcast available on your favourite platforms. Um, I can actually open it for a change, which is good. Properly disgusting. I don't like it. Um, loads of people do like it. I'm going to put this side on so that more bottles fit up here. And that's it for my kind of non whiskies. Let's have another sip. Cheers to everyone who's watching so far. Thank you. Mm. Okay, my next category, and as we go on here, I'm going to be sort of leaning, doing my exercise. We've got um, world whiskies. I'm kind of they're kind of banded together a little bit, so let's just get into it. We'll do my American whiskies first, and by that I mean things that were 
distilled in North America. So I shouldn't say things like it's not USA based necessarily. Three of them are, one of them isn't. So the first one here is the Eleanor, and this is their, oh, which one is it? 9.4. When I went two years ago, I went to their distillery in Texas, and obviously I had to buy a bottle of theirs. And this is really lovely stuff. I'm loath to drink the last little bit, um, but I will have to at some point, I'm sure. Again, I'll put that sideways to fit some more bottles on there. Of course, the old Forrester 1920. And the second bottle I bought back from the Americas when I went with that trip. Um, bit of a, uh, a standardised thing. You must get this if you're going to go to the States because you can't really get it in the UK. Then we've got the Mellow Corn. Haven't reviewed this yet, so I can't really tell you what I think about it. Um, but in my testings, quite like it, quite like it. I've now got two Irish, only two Irish, I know, poor, poor. I should I always say I'll explore Irish more and more, but the opportunities never arise in any case. I have the Teeling small batch, pretty good. Um, trying to kill that off at the moment. It's, there's not much left in it, so I think it'll go fairly soon. And then I have the uh, Dingle single malt, conversely, very, very lovely. Um, haven't actually touched much of that since I reviewed it, in fact, but it's just been hidden from me uh, at the back, so I should get onto it more and more. This one's kind of precarious now, a bit on the edge, but I need to fit all these on. So many. Oh, I missed one. Again, warts and all. This is the Signal Hill Canadian whiskey. That should have gone with the other ones, but never mind. Haven't reviewed this yet. Uh, picked it up for a dirt cheap price. Um, it's pretty good, I think, for its, for its price. Let's just slot that over there. So, sideways again. Okay, so now we're looking at... Um, yeah, one more then. Uh, this is the uh, Starwood Fortis. This is uh, Australian, my only Australian whiskey. Um, pretty good. I, I It took me a while to warm up to it, I have to admit, but I got it for 50 quid. Can't really complain at that too much. So now we're on to like Scandinavian, if you want to say, probably Nordic is probably the best way of saying these things. We've got some Swedish ones first. Uh, probably shouldn't have done this one first, but this is McMira. Um, you saw my old bottle. This is a another chap called Beach Hut Man. Did his own bottling and he sent me a bottle of this lovely bloke it's um, really good stuff uh, then we've got the mcmira svenska rook which is a smoky offering um, i should do a re-review of this because the last time i reviewed it it was the sample size and now i've got a full bottle so i should really review that again these really aren't going to fit we've got the mcmira yacht liquor which um they sent me, but I didn't really like it that much. It's it's good whiskey, but it's not like their best by any stretch. Uh, then, of course, I've got the Gronti, McMira Gronti. This was my whiskey of the year for 2020. Still available, highly recommended. Um, if you're going to get any McMira and you you don't want to get the core range, for instance, this is the one I would recommend. It's not your usual whiskey fare, and that's to its benefit, I think. Heading over to Norway, then. We've got. I've had this for years now. Um, can't bring myself to drink it because once it's gone, it'll be gone forever. But this is your lied. You, I, I was, I think it's your lied. Haven't seen much from Norsk whiskey since I reviewed that. Um, but I think they're still still going and pumping stuff out. But I think it all stays within Norway, unfortunately. Uh, then we've got a couple of Danish ones. We've got the Mosgard, and this is the um, uh, Pedro Hemenes cask finish. Uh, really nice. It's again only a half liter, um, but well worth a go. I think. Um, conversely, we have the Storning Danish Rye. Somerton Club sent me this. Um, I don't really get on with it. If rye, I don't really get on with it anyway, to be fair, so I'm not going to go into it too heavily, but struggle, I struggle to drink that one, I have to admit. I struggle to drink. Uh, that's the end of my world whiskies. Little sippy sippy, thank you very much. Uh, and now, it's almost exclusively scotch i think it might all yeah, this might just be scotch now so i'm breaking them down i don't want to just do scotch half an hour hopefully it won't be that long but so what i've got first is no age statement scotches then i've got age statement scotches uh, then i've got then i'll do the blended. i've only got a few blended so i might just chuck them in with the no age statements yeah let's do that nicely pre-prepared um and then i've got my independently branded bottles altogether that would have fit in other things there's probably some bourbons over there as well but the in independently bond stuff is is in you don't care let's move on so we've got a couple in boxes because i haven't reviewed them yet um i keep the boxes for the review and then i recycle them first one is the Tullibardine sovereign pick this up 
quite cheap. Um, yeah, I don't want to go into it too much because I haven't reviewed it yet, but it's it's a tasty whiskey. Again, one I haven't reviewed yet. This is the Tam Lavulin Sherry Cask. Uh, actually, haven't even opened this one yet, so I don't know what it tastes like. I'm assuming it's nice enough for the £25 I paid for it, but, you know, we'll get there when we get there. Again, haven't reviewed this. This is the Talisker Sky. Uh, I've reviewed Talaskas in the past and reviewed them well, so I'm hoping this is going to be more of the same for the price point, but we'll get into that. We've got the Cardew Gold Reserve, which um, is expensive, but uh, for for what it is, I mean. Um, but it's good enough, you know, it's good whiskey. Uh, I haven't reviewed it yet, so um, probably my most recent review would be the Dinston uh, Kentucky Cast Matured. Good, it's good good enough again. I, I got it really quite cheap, but um, recommended if you see it, I think. Uh, my only Loch Lomond at the moment is the single grain peated or peated single grain, whichever way you want to look at it. This is where I think you won't be able to see it anymore. Yeah, it's gone. Oh well. Um, it's it's nice enough. It took me a long time to warm up to that. Um, bit rough, bit, bit rough and ready, but it knows what it is. Um, this is a weird one. Wolfburn sherry aged whiskey i don't think i've touched this since last year i haven't reviewed it i don't like it so i'm probably not going to review it maybe i should review it anyway but you can't get hold of it anyway so what, what would be the point um if you want to see me, me review this then let me know um but this is the wolfburn what do they call it sherry aged whiskey this was for like father's day in I don't know, a couple of years ago um yeah a good example of, of sherry casks that i don't like Moving on, right, I've got a lot of 1770 here, so let's just go through. Um, let's do them in some sort of order, shall we? Yeah. We've got the Glasgow 1770. This is the original, but it's just got a spoke bottle. You'll see it says No Nonsense Whiskey on it. Um, you can do this. You can you can pick up a bottle of this and get your, them to write your name on it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I have reviewed that, but I'm keeping the box because obviously it says No Nonsense Whiskey on it. A bit indulgent, I know, but sue me. Uh, please don't, I could do about that. So next we've got the Triple Distilled. This is the release number one. Didn't vibe off of this, um, as you can see, haven't touched it much since, but um, they assure me that the latest release is a bit, a bit different because this was exclusively virgin oak matured, whereas the others were not. Um, but I'll check that out. I've actually got a, a tasting coming up for that as well. So if you're watching this, near time of recording and you're in the UK you might want to go and check out my website because I've got lots of tastings coming up and that's one of them. Finally of course then my whiskey of the year 2021 was this peated and this is the um it's not the first release second release but it's virgin oak and then finished in px casks. Um, really good whiskey really good whiskey recommended for any peat fan I would say and then we've got these two little beauties independently bottled Glasgow 1770s from the Summerton Club. This was the um, 2020, the 2020 Christmas release, and this was the 2021 Christmas release. Very different beasts, and both lovely in their own right. We'll enjoy killing them off. So lots of 1770. A couple more. Kings Barnes, Dream to Dram, really good whiskey. Um, if you uh, can, you still get it now. I don't know. I think you can still get it. I'm going to have to put that down there, but it's. Really good whiskey, highly recommended to anybody who's a whiskey fan. Check them out. Uh, the the old Ballon Truin. Um, just this is you know this is such good whiskey. It's unreal. Um, I picked this up from uh, a tasting um, when I did the uh, the distilleries tasting, and um, this is their kind of peated version of it. Um, the t uh, Tom and Tool is their non peated versions, but they've called it something completely different to differentiate itself, but. I got this immediately. It's, it's so good, so good, and relatively cheap, and 50%. Mm. Last, then, we've got the Klein Leash Game of Thrones. I don't know why I'm keeping this around. Need to finish it off. It's good. It's not as good as the standard Klein Leash, but it is good. Or, oh, do you know what? It might fit. It might fit on the table. We'll see. Another sip, then. I think we're, uh, we're going through these at a good rate. Hopefully, you're all enjoying the video. Mm. Sippy, sippy. Uh, let's get on to the age statement scotches. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I guess in no particular order, we've got the Ardbeg Wee Beastie, five-year-old. Haven't reviewed that yet, um, so don't want to don't want to say too much about it. But again, check the links below. Glengoyne, eighteen years, fabulous. 
If you can get hold of this, fabulous. Need to kill that bottle, it's getting a bit low. Generally speaking, when it's below the label, I tend to bin it off. When I say bin it off, I mean kill it in a responsible way. I don't mean chuck it away. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, two little weeants here from uh, Great Drums. This is a Glengarry eight-year-old. This is a Nokdu eight-year-old. Haven't reviewed these yet, so I can't really go into it too much. What I can say is that I've tasted them, and they are lovely. I'm going to slot that one there. And that one in front of you. Why not? A uh, couple now we've got from the Whiskey Works. We've got the Corsa Master. Mm. And we've got the King of Trees. Um, two very interesting whiskies. And I have to say, I would highly recommend checking out the Whiskey Works if you if you don't know who they are. It's uh, an arm of White and Mackay's who um, are basically creating whiskey for whiskey fans like us. Uh, I imagine, you know, if you set this along through a video of someone talking about the whiskey collection, that you're, a, that you're a, a big fan of whiskey. And if you haven't heard of Whiskey Works, get them on your radar because um, they're making, it's making really good stuff. Really good stuff. We've got the Glenelaki 15. Um, I wasn't, again, wasn't expecting to like this, but really, really enjoyed that. I had it as part of my 10K celebration last year. Should do something like that again. Jura 18. You guys know what I know about Jura 18. It's... It's nice enough, you know, it, it, no real complaints apart from it's a decent wedge of money. If it didn't have an 18-year-old age statement on it, I don't think it would sell as much uh, for as much that, as it does. But I got it for 50 quid, so I definitely don't complain about that. Conversely, I got also got this for 50, uh, 50 quid from the same club, Summerton Club. And this one blows that out of the water, which is the only thing I can say about that. Um, Deanston, we all know we love Deanston. Everybody loves Deanston. Um, this one, I mean, I've kept this with this lot because it doesn't really count anymore. But this was Heroes and Heretics did a range called the Higginbottom a few years ago. That's now gone. But this is a 27 year old Boone Harbin. Oh, probably one of my best whiskies that I've got in this collection. Selection, collection, I don't know what you would call this because they're all open. I don't think you could call it a collection, really. We've got the Brook Isla Barley 2010. Um, just just a really great whiskey. Um, glad I opened that. I probably could have made some money on it if I didn't, but I'm not about that. Tormor 14. Don't really get that over here in the UK. This I picked this up in France. Um, it's nice enough. Yeah, exclu uh, exclusive distributor in France. Um, nice enough. I wouldn't chase it down um, or buy it again for that matter. I bought two bottles of it and that'll do me. Finally then, for the age statements, we have the Dalhuni. 15 year old, this is excellent, excellent whiskey for its price. A 15 year old uh, scotch, um, and you can see I've really killed this off. Uh, the Winter's Gold, don't be fooled by that. That one is not good. Um, you know, fair enough if you enjoy it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. For me, the, it's night and day between that and this. For me, I wouldn't bother with it. I'll just stick with this for the same, for near enough the same price. Might be a bit cheaper, but whatever. Oh, I lied, I've got two more. I've got the Buna Harman, 18 year old. Mm, haven't reviewed this yet, but boy, I can't wait to review it. What, what a whiskey. I got it for my birthday. Uh, and then we have the Electric 18. It is in there. Um, I, As I said earlier, I kind of usually get rid of boxes, but I don't think I'm going to with that because it is beautiful and I'll probably repurpose it for something else later. Oh, I did say I was going to band in. This is going to be a bit of a, a between a one. I've got, yeah, let's do it. I'll get these out together. What we have here is three black bottles. I think these are excellent, I have to say, for, for the price of them, you know, for 20, 22 quid, 25, 25 bargains. You know, and this one, I mean, it's a real stinky peat, this is, but it's good. I like that. I like a stinky peat. And then finally, a bit of a joke one, the famous Vincent. In fact, I'm not even going to put this on the table. I will, I'll put it out of the way. But it's, I got this as a wedding present and I'm not going to open that. I don't like famous grouse. I've tried it and I've tried it and I've tried it and I've tried it and I don't like it. Mm. Right, I've got one more category for you. And actually, we're doing really well on time, which is good. I mean, I haven't been wittering. Let's stick with that. We've got independently bottled whiskies. Most of it's scotch, some of it isn't. And I'll try and keep them in somewhat of an order of my um, 
of the, the brands, let's say. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so f first of all, keep walk facing away from the microphone. So sorry about that if you're dropping it. I've got the Big Peak Christmas 2021, which was lovely. And we've got the Scallywag, which was the winter edition 2021. Also lovely. Well worth checking out. I do love Douglas Lang, although these are my only two bottles right now. So many bottles, so little time, as they say. Let's do a bunch of firkin. So I've got some firkins here. Um, I've covered these a lot. If you want to know more about firkins, go and check out my videos on those because I love these guys. And this right here is the Kalila and Masala. Um, again, I'm not going to go into how they make it. Um, it's interesting. Just check out one of my videos on that. Uh, we've got a Lecheg also in the Masala cask. Mm -hmm. We have uh, an Altmore in a Tawny Port. Look at the colour on that. Oh, so good. And finally, we have a Tully Bedeen in a Oloroso and Amatillado cask, which I actually haven't reviewed yet. Need to review that. Two of them I haven't reviewed, two of them I have. You can find my videos in the description below. Uh, one on its own. This is a Montgomery's, and this is a Highland Park 21 year old, independently bottled. Mmm. Yes, please. More of that. Probably the second best whiskey I've got. Maybe. Two together then. We've got the Gulliver's 47. And here we have two English whiskies. This is the one from The English. And this is from Cotswolds. So I'll kind of slot them together. We are getting very tight over here, lads. Very tight. Uh, nah, they're not all going to fit. I have to move some stuff around. Um, then we've got these two. Oh, well, okay. One is a Scotch and one isn't. This is the Wax House Whiskey. Uh, we've got the release number three, which is a Speyside. Um, does it say where it was bottled? Linkwood, of course, Linkwood. And we've got the Cotswolds Distillery for their number four. Both excellent, excellent whiskies. Well worth checking out. Um, don't think they're available anymore, but they're releasing stuff fairly steadily. So, you know, please do go and check them out. We have the Nabraran Big Brother, and this is the um, Kalila nine-year-old PX finished. Uh, well worth checking out. They're putting out cool stuff all the time. I actually haven't tried any of their latest releases, but I really should. Need another little sip while I'm finishing. Mm. Stay with me. We've got a few more. Um, yeah, I'll do this one. Uh, Smokehead, high voltage. Didn't really like it. It's not. I mean, it's okay. It's unfair to say it's okay, but for me, I didn't really vibe off of it. Um, in fact, I'm going to move that there because I need to fit all of these last ones on. The last one, I've left it the kind of last. Um, Heroes and Heretics have got a lot of their bottles, so let's just go through it. We've got the Disciples, Krugeliki 12 year, and we've got the Disciples, Macduff 13 year. Haven't covered this one, have covered this one. Um, all, all of these are well worth checking out. Oh, uh, we've got the two state sides. I've just covered one of these. This one's the Heaven Hill, which was the second release. Really lovely. And this one was the uh, George Dickel that I've just covered. Um, in the UK, it's a struggle to get hold of like really good bourbon. So um, getting some independently bottled stuff is is pretty good for me. Um, I, I like their things, especially Heritage and Heritage. I like them in general. We've got the Heritage and Heritage Classic 12 year. Um, again, lovely. Let's put that there. Getting close, getting close. Three more left. The 48, aged 10 years. Um, entry level, you know, I think it's like 50 quid. Um, I can't say too much about what's in it, but there's some, some good heritage in there. And then finally, we've got leaving pretty much some of the best till last, to be fair. Falls of Caledonia, which was my runner up for whiskey in the year of 2020. One, um, really good. If you like sherry cask whiskies, Falls of Caledonia is your go-to. And then we've got the Smoke and Glory, Croft and Gia, 14 year old. We only just got it all on. There we go. Well, that's me. I mean, I'm, I'm roughly about half an hour, 
almost half an hour. Last year's was like 42 minutes. So I think I've done really well considering the amount of whiskey that I've got this year, which is utterly insane. So yeah, if you are part of, let's, let's call it the half an hour club. If you're part of the half an hour club, drop a comment below and let me know that you made it this far. I just want to say, as always, a massive, massive thank you for all your eyeballs watching my videos. I uh, really enjoy making the content. I make it for me, and if you want to watch along, I love that. Um, it's a shame when people don't like it, but that's not the point of YouTube. Your point is to enjoy making your content, and if people want to watch, watch. And if you don't like the content, there are plenty of other people that make great content that might be more to your suiting. Um, in any case, you can see I've got a lot of whiskies that I need to get through, and I've got a lot of whiskies that I haven't covered yet in this collection, selection, whatever you want to call it. So I'll be doing that this year and getting more and more bottles as I go along. Um, and again, just one final thank you to everybody, uh, especially my patrons and YouTube supporters and people that are kind of buying me a coffee below. If you are interested in a little bit of extra support for the channel, then you can go and check out those things. But as always, it's never essential. It just really does help to keep the lights on, so to speak. Um, of course, I have merch and things like that. But you can see all that if you go and check out nonsensewhiskey.com. I've got a full website with a store and events and whatnot. And I've got a Discord channel, all these cool things. So if you are watching this and you feel like you want to be part of the community, then send me a message on any of my platforms, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, you know, emails, um, vin at nonsensewhiskey.com. I'll get you involved and i just love to hear from all of you. So yeah, again, third and final thank you for watching this video. An absolute pleasure to make content for you for uh, coming up to my sixth year. Um, looking forward to more and more stuff. So, yeah. Again, one final thank you. The fourth thank you. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on more No Nonsense Whiskey videos. Cheers.